Hi, this is Scott Weidenkiewicz, and we're going to be talking with two photographers that you have come to know over the years. And we're going to be talking about a special summit, virtual summit coming up, all about Adobe Lightroom. And so welcome, Dave and Matt, uh, for this interview about your Lightroom Summit. Great to be here. How you guys doing? What's up, Scott? <laughs> so, um, Dave, I don't think you and I have ever met in person. Uh, Matt, obviously, we've seen each other many times, uh, mostly at Photo Plus Expo, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Dave, nice to uh, virtually meet you um, nice. after many years. <laughs> um, and for anybody who's watching this or reading the article over at photofocus.com, you uh, probably recall I interviewed Dave about his Photoshop Summit um, a couple months ago. So definitely check that out. I'll, I'll link to that. That summit has already passed, but um, you know you should still check out that interview anyway. Um, so uh, Dave, uh, why don't you start and just share a quick bit about yourself, and then we'll move on to Matt, and then we'll dive into some questions. Well, I am a full-time Photoshop educator. That's what I've done in one form or another since about two weeks after Photoshop came out in 1990. I taught my first class then and haven't stopped since. In, in like I said, in one form or another, it used to be in classrooms and then seminar rooms. And now, of course, it's uh, mostly online. Well, especially in the last year, it's been entirely online. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I do is basically try and help people get better at using Photoshop. Awesome. Matt? Uh, I am the same as Dave, <laughs> uh, full-time, uh, you know, photography, photo editing educator. Um, little known fact, Dave Cross got me my very first job in the industry. <laughs> so <laughs> although there, there was some, so, yeah, there was some of dispute opinion over that, but we that, all know that, that Dave actually was, but yeah, we know. <laughs> 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 there's a little dispute way because I, I remember Dave uh, yeah I, I got a call from uh, Kelby media way back and and they said hey you know uh, we need somebody to kind of join Dave and Scott were doing all the content and they said we need somebody to join the the team and Dave Dave said he knew you from a couple of different things and you're local here in Tampa you want to come in for an interview and I went in and <laughs> the rest is history but later on we, we there was some dispute where, Somebody else was like, oh, no, no, I was the one that got Matt in here. And I, we both very, I was very specifically remember the HR person <laughs> saying, yeah, Dave referred you and said you'd be a great fit. So You're welcome. And the rest is you, history, Dave. as they say. <laughs> that was back in 2000, 2004. Yeah. And many years later, many years <laughs> later, you, uh, you know, go, go out on your own and you're doing a lot of great things now, um, you know, uh, you know, on, on your own now without the, the, the backing of... Uh, Kelby as well. So that's, uh, it's been really nice to see that that transition over the years, you know? Yeah, it's so. been fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Dave, I know you, you hosted the Photoshop summit before, um, right. but is this the first Lightroom virtual summit? It is. Uh, so the very first Photoshop summit was actually this time a year ago. So it was in April, uh, last year in the, in the very beginning of the pandemic that we kind of jumped in with both feet and said, let's try this virtual conference thing, not knowing anything about how it was going to work. And it was very successful in both in attendance, which was a big part because the, the, the main focus for me was to create education that could be free. And then if people wanted to purchase uh, recordings, they could, but we didn't want it to be like a traditional conference where you had to pay X dollars just to get in the door. So we tried the first one not knowing what to expect. It went very well. So we did the second one in November. And at, after each one, I did a survey saying, hey, if we were going to do any other topic for a virtual summit, what would it be? And overwhelmingly, the very first one, the top one was photography. And I thought, yeah, I don't know how that would work because mm -hmm. it's one thing for people to you know, do a 45 minute class on a topic that's either Photoshop or Lightroom centric, but to say photography, that's just, you know, a broad topic. So the very close second was people asking for a Lightroom summit. So uh, being a very honest person with myself, I don't live in the Lightroom world as much as people like Matt 
do. And I thought, well, I happen to know this guy, a good friend of mine, who's <laughs> like one of the top, if not the top Lightroom trainers in the world. I said, hey, Matt, how would you think, feel about partnering with me to try and put on a Lightroom virtual summit? And thankfully, he said yes. So that's how it all got started. I was going to I was going to ask how um how I mean obviously you guys have known each other for many years. I I knew that already, but I was actually going to ask how how this came to be. So it's cool that that um you're literally you literally created this summit off based on the attendees feedback and requests from the from the past summit. So right. um kudos for that for for paying attention to what you know the the customers want basically. Um it's great to great to see that. Yeah. And like um, I said, I mean, I, the big, biggest, one of the big challenges organizing a summit is trying to pull together 20 really good instructors. And because like I said, I, I don't spend as much time in the Lightroom world as I do in Photoshop. I started jotting down names and I was kind of petering out after like about 12. <laughs> and I said, well, I need 20. So then I contact one of the first questions I had for Matt was if you were going to put together a list of names who would be on it. So he gave me a bunch of names, including some that honestly I hadn't heard of, but that's only because I don't, like I said, I don't spend any time looking at Lightroom uh, instructors or classes. And thankfully some of those people have joined and are honestly fantastic. Like I've, I get the benefit of every time a video comes in, I get to watch it and I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. So right. it's a yeah, yeah. great, great group of people. And and Matt, how do you like being on the organization? I mean, I know you're also teaching at the summit, but how do you, how do you how do you like uh, being on the organization side of the of uh, putting a, a big summit like this together? That's fun. It's it's like a, it's like a little puzzle, you know. It's like you know trying to find <laughs> right. trying to find trying to find people that each bring something to to the to the game is is fun um, and challenging sometimes, but. But still, it's you know it's a good challenge. So, trying to find as you know somebody that brings a portrait uh, type of a flair, somebody that brings a landscape, somebody that brings still life, travel, whatever. So people that bring all the different genres together, and then people, you know, everybody's got a different teaching style. So that's fun to put together. And then at the same time, then you get to see all the classes and piecing piecing that part together. Challenging, but again, that's a uh, I you know that was kind of like where you could start to visualize and say, okay, that's it. Like so many classes came in that I would never have even thought of. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like when I'm sitting there looking at this class list and I'm like, I want to take that class. <laughs> um, right. That's, so, that's pretty so, cool. So uh, that was actually going to be one of my questions was um, what, what classes uh, from this goes for both of you. Uh, are you really, really most, what's the, the top class that you're excited to, to watch yourself um, um, between all of them. I mean, I know it's probably so hard to choose, but if you had to pick mm. one each, which which would it be? <laughs> I'll let Dave mm. go first. I don't know about, I don't know if I can do one, but uh, <laughs> I'd say down to two, it's uh, Daniel Gregory's doing a class that's actually scanning film negatives and using Lightroom to do it. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like using a DSLR to do film scanning and that just sounds really interesting to me because oh, like yeah. many people i still have lots of negatives sitting around in a box somewhere that i haven't done anything with because it's too hard <laughs> so that one and then ben wilmore is doing a class that's uh, i can't remember the exact name but it's basically like developing a lightroom mindset and that one is really interesting to me because it's not just like here's how to catalog or here's how to use range mass it's like just Overall, if you're delving into Lightroom, here's kind of the mindset you should have to, I guess, in effect, think like Lightroom. And I thought that was a really intrig intriguing idea for a class. For sure. I think mine is uh, there's a class all on range masking. And so mm -hmm. I'm anxious to see I'm anxious to see, you know, somebody else's take on that, because I think I think those are really some of the most powerful tools inside of Lightroom. So. Uh, to devote an entire class to it, um, I, I thought that was going to be a fun one. Is that one? Uh, does that happen to be Nicole's class by chance? Because I know she does a lot of masking classes over the time. Uh, uh, look at the website. Nope, nope, that's not hers. <laughs> no, I think it's Mark. Nope. Um, I think it's Mark Denny doing Mark that Denny, one. Mark Denny, yeah, yeah, Mark cool. Denny. 
Yeah, the, if um, looking at the at the list, there are a lot of speakers that um, you would um, kind of expect to see, you know, teach at a, at a Lightroom Summit, and then some that, you know, um, might might shock you, and then they're probably going to be a, amazing classes. I'm sure they will be. Um, so it's it's really nice to see a, such a diverse group of people that are going to be uh, teaching um, from, you know. Uh, popular to popular names in the industry already to, to people up and coming to people who may not uh, teach on a regular basis that just are really good at it and want to. So it's really, it's really cool to see such a diversity there. Um, One of the things that, that I thought was kind of interesting, especially when Matt gave me the names that he suggested and it kind of reminded me that this is our new world. Like in the past, I would have thought, who have I seen speak at a conference somewhere? Now, that was kind of my, uh, you know, measurement as to who was a really good instructor was who's out there teaching at industry events. And mm -hmm. again, some of the names that Matt put forward, I hadn't heard of because of that. But then I look at their YouTube channel and it's huge. So right. that's where they've made their name. So they don't necessarily go out and do the industry trade shows right. where we normally see each other. So that's been an interesting aspect to me is introducing me to instructors that I wouldn't otherwise have probably come across. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm looking at just some of the names on there. It's like, I've never taught next to Anthony Morganti before, or, um, Mark Denny. Um, I've been on some calls with Toby Shinobi who, you know, I just, I really enjoyed some of the, the, uh, between Sony and Adobe and a couple other things, I really enjoyed his personality on those calls. So it's like when I, you know, Dave was asking for people, he came to mind, but uh, like Anthony, Mark, Sean Bagshaw, it's like, I mean, Sean is at a lot of industry events, but like Dave said, you know, um, some of the people I went to are, are, are YouTube. I, I actually consider YouTube more of the an equalizer these days you know it's because sometimes like industry events it's like you just keep getting invited back because you were invited before mm -hmm. but you know a right. lot of these guys built their their channel from nothing and they wouldn't have built it from nothing if they weren't really good at it right for sure yep yeah especially and especially these days when youtube makes it even harder and harder so if you keep growing uh you know it means you're doing something right um so yeah, uh, it's it's like I said, it's really nice to see that uh, this this list. Um, so I'm going to talk about a semi-controversial topic. Um, <laughs> I recently did a comparison between, um, and I, I've seen other people do this comparison as well, between the new super resolution versus Topaz's Gigapixel AI, um, and uh, I have my own opinions on it, um, and. Uh, I, I, we know Adobe is constantly working on improvements for Lightroom and many times bringing features over like super resolution, which is coming. They even said it's coming. Um, so one, I'm wondering, what is your opinion on um, first super resolution in general? Uh, because this is coming to Lightroom uh, <laughs> sooner than later. And two, um, is there something new in Lightroom or coming to Lightroom, aside from that, that you're really excited about? Uh, Dave, you want to go first? Um, you know, for me, that's one of those things where, to be perfectly frank, when I saw super resolution, I was like, oh, cool. Because <laughs> nice. I, I couldn't think, like I was reading people saying, so if you have those photos you took 20 years ago that are really small, I'm like, mm, nope. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I tried it and went, oh, that's... That's nice, but I guess I haven't had a situation yet where it really struck me as like, oh yeah, that'll this will be the solution for this problem. So for me, I I kind of tried it out and recorded a short little tutorial and go, yep, yeah, this is this is how you do it. And so I'm still I'm still kind of for me the the jury's still out a little bit just until maybe it's I need a personal project where I'll suddenly go, ah, this is the time where I will try that, but. You know, for example, I have lots of old heirloom photographs that are tiny, but I mean, I specifically bought a pretty good scanner for that purpose so I can scan at a high enough resolution that I don't necessarily need that for that type of situation. So, right. um, you know, beyond that, like, it, like you said, 
Adobe is always working on things. And, and one of the things that I appreciate about them is they do a lot of the time address um, customer needs, not just, hey, here's a super cool new thing that then people like look at and go, eh, <laughs> will I ever use that? I'm not sure. But I, I'm sure they're working on some things that, um, you know, and I'm sure Matt's in the same boat where we have to be careful about the wording we choose because being right. in beta <laughs> programs, you sometimes forget that other people haven't seen what you have. So <laughs> right. I believe there are things coming which will be very interesting to lots of Lightroom users. Is there something new in Lightroom that's new in this latest version um, or one of the recent versions that you're very excited about? Um, I know that you're more of a Photoshop person. Yeah, I mean, person, I, but I certainly, I, I would concur with something Matt said earlier about range mass to me that I know that's mm. a couple of versions ago, but it's, it's something that when I do play around in Lightroom, I was like, yeah, I can see how that is can be really useful. Cause I honestly was never a huge fan of the adjustment brush. Cause I just felt I wasn't getting the accuracy that I could get in Photoshop. But then with range mass, you're, you're basically master being generated in a very similar way. So that's something I've certainly been playing with a lot more because I think it's got great potential. Fantastic. And what about you, Matt, uh, on those two questions? So, so super resolution, I think is, I think part of it's an education um, thing. So I'm like Dave, to me, I was like, I, I never really had a problem with this before. Um, <clears throat> so I think one of the things is, is I think in a way it's kind of misunderstood. Number one, it's hard to get to. So it's like, if you're going to give somebody something to upsize your photo, it's like, why can't we just put it in Photoshop and go to the upsize <laughs> menu or something <laughs> like that? It's just like, um, so it's a little hard to get to. And then I think it's a little misunderstood in that I think the reality of it is, is you take a photo that was perhaps a a lower resolution photo and you want to print it really big, or perhaps it's just a 2000 pixel resolution photo and you want to share it on a 8K screen. And I think it works good there. What I see people trying to do with it is they'll take a, a wildlife photo that's this big, you know, here's the full frame. Nobody, this is audio, so you probably can't see my hands, but you know, <laughs> and then like, and then put like a little, you know, take an eight by 10 piece of paper and then put a penny down on it and somebody crops into that and then thinks that they can 4X the size of that and get a usable photo. And that's just not the case. Not, you know, nothing's gonna really give you that. So I saw amongst, believe it or not, of all the websites out there, cause I, I'm not a big Petapixel fan, but I saw one of the best reviews on Petapixel where they reviewed Photoshop image size they reviewed Topaz Gigapixel and Super Resolution. And what they came down to was all of those outperformed image size in Photoshop, but it was so negligible, it was not worth the time and hassle to not just go to image size and upsize your photo. <laughs> and that was really the best article I saw written on it because it's true. If you're gonna pixel peep, they all look better. But in reality, when that print comes out, nobody's really gonna know um, and they all look good enough. So that's that's my thoughts on that topic. Um, we do know that that's coming to Lightroom. I would probably assume we'll see it this summer at some point. I'm really surprised that what I didn't come out in parity with, with mm -hmm. Adobe Camera Raw because they usually keep them together. As far as new photo Lightroom things, so here's a, this is, this is probably going to surprise people. Um, I don't ever look at the pre-release. <laughs> so I look at the pre-release maybe two days before it's about to come out and I'm ready to do my video just because I, I'm pretty busy with work and it's just, you know, I, I don't want to be a beta tester. So little known fact, I actually got booted off of the Photoshop beta program for not <laughs> logging in. <laughs> so, so I actually don't know what's coming to Photoshop other than I'm on a call that happens like a week before it comes out. I actually never know what's coming in Photoshop because I'm not even on the beta program anymore. So, um, so yeah, I have no idea what's coming to Lightroom, but I would say of recent recent interest, uh, color grading is a, is a huge one. Color Ooh. color grading and the way that they implemented that is that was a nice that was a nice nice little bump in uh, back in October. Yeah, so so we know that there's going to be a class on the uh, range masking, 
Um, is do, is there a class on color grading? I mean, it looks like uh, Andre will be teaching about color. Um, right, and that, there is a class. I think uh, I want to say it's Mark is doing a class on specifically landscape photography and color grading. So he kind of hey Seuss, takes hey it. Seuss is doing creative color grading too. There you go. I don't. Awesome. You guys are both smart. You have the schedule in front of you, and I'm trying to do it from memory. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled up the email um, I sent you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Um, so, so what what advice uh, would you tell new summit attendees, uh, people that have never been to, they haven't been to the Photoshop virtual summit, they haven't been to any virtual summit, they're used to attending in person wor workshops, um, or or maybe they're not used to going to workshops at all. Um, what what kind of advice would you tell? Uh, these new attendees that um, have never experienced anything like this before? Well, the first thing I would say, and this is a lot in, in to a large degree based on the many, 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 many emails I got from people during the past summits of going, oh, what what time zone is it? And I, I'm, I'm missing a class. And my so the first word of advice is just relax. And you got plenty of time because what people forget is that once a class is released, it's available to watch for 48 hours. So there's no worry about I have to get up at, you know, middle of the night in my part of the world, uh, then I'll, and I'll miss it if I don't do that. No, you won't. Because as long as you register for the free pass, you get a link and that is good. It'll stay there for 48 hours after each class is released. So you got plenty of time to watch. So you don't have to worry about. I've had people say to me, okay, I need the schedule because I'm going to take the whole week off work. And I'm like, mm, okay. I mean, you could <laughs> do that too, but you know, like if you have plenty of, of PTO, then go for it. But so that's the first thing is just, you know, there's no worry. It's not like a high stress. It's not like an in-person event where if you don't get down that hallway fast enough and they close the door, you don't get to see that, you know, live presentation. And once it's finished, right. it's finished. It's not like that at all. And um, the other thing is that, you know, we tried to make it the, the, the concept so that everything is free. But at the same time, it's definitely worth looking at the VIP pass because that gives you all the recordings of all the classes, first of all. So that means you have even more time to watch and rewatch forever. But also the instructors are asked to provide class notes, which is uh, something that, again, doesn't happen at every in-person event very much anymore so but that's a big part of what we do so that's uh, something to and it's it's pretty affordable honestly it's 99 dollars up until the start of the conference then it goes up to 149 but for 40 classes i can't do that math in my head but i think it's like you know a dollar 37 a class or something. i don't know what it is it's not a lot <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very affordable, especially uh, before the summit starts. Still affordable when the summit does start. Um, I think uh, I think that, that's great advice. And it is funny, kind of funny. Like, in order to get class notes in an in-person workshop, you got to do it yourself. Um, and so that actually, in my opinion, it, it makes you lose a little bit of focus about, you know, with, mm -hmm. with paying attention to it. So it's nice that it's provided to you. Uh, in the summit. And and if um, you're like, I don't know if everyone, anyone else is like me, but I found that I'd be taking what I thought was really good notes and I'd look back a month later and at some point it just says, press shift. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> For what? <laughs> yeah. With what tool? Like what? You know, at yeah. the time it probably made perfect sense, but. <laughs> yeah. It, when when I when I take handwritten notes, it winds up looking like a doctor's prescription. So um, <laughs> it's just a bunch of, whole bunch of scribble. I can't read it after. Uh, <laughs> Matt, do you have any advice for uh, for any any newbies to a, to a um, virtual summit? Yeah, I would say you know, and and while while I we would fully love you to purchase the the uh, VIP pass, um, if you're not sure that's for you yet, or you're 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 not going to do it, I would say you know, there's a lot of classes there, and sometimes people people take a class that they already know just to make sure that they're not missing something. A lot of times they find out that they really already knew the topic. So I would just say, go into that, look at that schedule. And if you do have to pick and choose between the classes you're going to take, take classes that you know nothing about. Um, mm. I think you'll get, you'll get the most, you know, you'll get the most reward from it because you'll, you'll, you'll learn something totally new rather than learning just a small, tiny sliver of something that you already were familiar with. And I, I build on that too, by saying, 
people who've been around for a while as as students have their favorites. Like the kind of people said, "Ooh, I got to take Matt's class, yes. or I have to take Ben's class." And yeah, but also look at the people you haven't taken a class from before. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. But it's always kind of neat to see a different voice, a different style, um, a different approach. You know. Yeah, we could we could probably that, that'd be a whole topic in and of itself. But I I got an email from somebody asking me about you know. Um, hey, I, I just signed up for the summit. I want to make sure I didn't see a, re- I didn't get an email reply back. Can you make sure I'm in and everything? And, um, you know, so I sent him back something and I was like, yeah, you know, I, you know, you're, you're in your, everything's good. And, um, he said something to the effect of, he's like, yeah, I can't wait for your classes. And, and I recognized the name from my email list. I recognize the name from my Facebook group. I recognize the name from comments on my website and my YouTube channel. And I, I, I thought to myself, and I'm like, man, I really hope he takes other classes because he, you know, he follows everything that I do. And yeah, he might pick up a thing or two, but just like Dave said, it's like, you know, go, go watch somebody else, take that opportunity because, um, you know, a lot of those people in there, you know, aren't necessarily doing blogs and and things all the time. And, um, you know, there's some really good talent in there. So. Yeah. Like a good example of, uh, you know, even if it's a topic that you already understand, like if you want to dig deeper into a specific topic, you know, learning from a different person could really open the door to doing it in a different way. Um, and a good example of this might be something as basic as doing a vignette where people use the vignette tool versus using a circular, you know, um, local adjustment. Right. So there's multiple ways to do things. And just one person teaching a different way could really unlock um you know, how your entire workflow is mm-hmm. <laughs> really, you can, you can improve things, you can change things. Um, so I, I completely agree. Uh, take, take classes from people that you don't normally take classes. And, from. I, and I think the, although D- Dave and Matt are good. So. <laughs> <laughs> the last part on, on that sort of similar idea is there might be a topic where it sounds a little more advanced than you might be. And this is a Matt and I, for as long as I can remember, have discuss the whole concept of what is advanced really mean. But for me, part of it is it could open up doors for you to know what's possible. Even if you're not going to use it today, you might look at something, watch one of the classes and go, that's, I'm not quite sure I completely understand what's being said, but it's, it's cool to see this potential or something that I can move to aspire towards at some point in my Lightroom life is that I'll start taking advantage of you know, for example, there's a class that's kind of like tips and tricks or uh, I forget what the exact title is. It's like a sort of for, for more advanced users where a lot of it might be above someone's head. But again, if you sort of see, oh, that's I didn't even know that kind of thing was possible. There's nothing wrong with that either. It's not to say that you're going to understand every single class, but you're going to equip yourself with more knowledge of what's available. Um, so I want to dig into a few Lightroom specific questions. Um, so, uh, first one, Matt, can you share a Lightroom tip to get the ball rolling for any new Lightroom users out there? Um, I, I don't know. Is it even possible that there's not anybody using Lightroom (laughs) these days, but, but can you share, um, a, a simple tip to just to get the ball rolling for, for everybody? Uh, yeah. Um, so I think probably one of the things that, that I use, I use in my videos and I, I don't even think about it. So I often get a question from somebody that asks, how did you do that? Um, when I'm doing my basic toning in the, in the basic panel, anything with exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, uh, I always hold down the option key on Mac or the alt key on the PC so that you can see your highlight and shadow clipping. Um, and you know, the questions I get are twofold. Number one, somebody says, why did your screen just go black or white? And what are you doing? And, <laughs> right. and then the other question is, is why don't you use the histogram? Cause I, I keep the histogram closed 100% of the time. Um, mm-hmm. and that's because that key gives me all I need to know about a photo. All I need to know is, did I make it all white or did I make it all black? Um, and that's really the only useful in- information I think in the histogram. So it's, uh, that's probably one of my biggest things that I do automatically these days. And again, sometimes I have to remind myself to make sure I tell people what I'm doing because uh, it doesn't come across that way. 
Right, right. Yeah, I can I can see that really throwing people off. But yeah, I I agree. I'd love I do the same thing, uh, and it is second nature. Um, <laughs> awesome. Um, so this is for both of you. Uh, what is your favorite Lightroom keyboard shortcut, Matt? You just shared one, but uh, if you have another one, <laughs> you're welcome to, to share another as well. Uh, I do. I'll make mine super quick. Um, double click on anything to reset. That's that's just again. That's one of the things I just do. I do it in videos, and people will ask me, "Hey, how did all like you know when you have the word effect on top of your adjustment brush?" Um, double click the word effect and it resets all the sliders under the brush double click the word tone in the basic panel it resets all the sliders in the basic panel um and it's just it's second nature to do that and i uh, i have to remind myself that <laughs> sometimes i do it in a video and i don't tell somebody what i just did but yeah that's a big one <laughs> and dave so for me as many people know i live and breathe in photoshop and delve into lightroom so it's going to sound like i'm being sarcastic but i'm actually not is that my favorite shortcut is command and control e to edit in photoshop so that i <laughs> take advantage of the what lightroom can do in terms right. of organizing and all that kind of stuff right. but then after doing some global overall adjusting i know well i my nature of what i do is i spend a lot of time compositing and using layers and that means photoshop so to be able to right. quickly jump now having said that on my wish list forever in lightroom is please let us edit our own keyboard shortcuts because mm -hmm. i would rather that keyboard shortcut was applied to open as a smart object in photoshop but alas you cannot do that still hmm. interesting yeah see this is one of those areas hopefully adobe watches this and they start listening <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't listened to me for uh, 10 years so far on that one. <laughs> um, and um, so, Matt, what is your favorite Lightroom feature or tool that is available to you? Uh, I'm going to go back to the class that I was looking forward. Uh, I would say um, range masking, I think. Range masking. You know, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to even go simpler than that. The adjustment brush. The adjustment brush is by far my favorite tool. And if you took away everything else in Lightroom and you just left me with the adjustment brush and all of its settings, I could edit any photo the way that I want. <laughs> right. So, so Dave, uh, since you use Lightroom more for the organizational aspect, what's your favorite part of Lightroom for organization? Uh, what, what keeps you using it for that? Um, I think, I mean, for me, a lot of it is the ability to look through images really quickly and just through different keystrokes say, yeah, keep that one, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just, it makes it very easy and quick to, I like seeing things nice and large, but know that I can just start using, you know, shortcuts to go to the next one and flag them or star rate or whatever system I tend to use. I tend to, uh, I've, I think Matt and I've talked about this before, where once we were saying, who does anyone actually use more than one star? I mean, to me, it's either a five star or it's not. I don't know what a three star photo actually is, but <laughs> I guess I if you have your own mental uh, rating system to go, well, a three is kind of a maybe, but so for me, it's just five next, you know, but. Uh, so I do, yeah. um, one is anything that I am like, okay, one is a maybe. Three is a keeper, and this is from for my client work more than from my own personal stuff. So one is a maybe that I have to come back to. Three is a keeper. Five is when my client picks a photo in like the gotcha. photo gallery. That works. Um, so I, I skip the others. So nothing's a four. <laughs> there's, there's no fours. No fours. Um, <laughs> um, so let's go back to the summit again. Um, this summit, uh, as you've mentioned, is, you know, you can watch the videos on your own as it's going on. Um, is there any back and forth uh, during each uh, speaker's session? Is there back and forth like a chat area um, where the, you know, the attendees can talk with the speaker? Or is it um, there is not. And, and uh, to be honest about that, when I first, the very first summit, it was just all last minute. And that was just one less thing to worry about was trying to figure that out. But then between that summit and the ones I've done was Adobe Max. And Adobe Max decided to, that they were going to have a live chat feature. And my class happened to be one of the first ones broadcast 
and honestly, the live chat thing. I mean, there's a zillion people watching, mm -hmm. and they're all throwing in questions. And to me, it's like I, I get the benefit, but then if you get you're answering. 20% of the questions, what do the other 80% of the people feel like that? What about my question? So I just felt that it was better to not open that door at all. Um, we are exploring the idea of doing like a in on one of the days doing a, a live Q and a because some of the people from the Lightroom team offered uh, the possibility of trying to answer some questions. So we're still trying to figure that. So that one's not a, a given yet for sure. But that's that's the only thing. And, and part of it too, is we just felt that because it's a recording that you can watch over and over again, a lot of the questions that were coming in is what was that shortcut? You know, what, mm. what did he say there? So having the ability to rewatch means you eliminate at least some of those questions. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, you mentioned it is $99 before the summit. Uh, when is the summit? When does it start? So it's May 3rd through the 7th. Uh, classes start at okay. 8 a.m. when it starts, the price goes from 99 to 149 It basically goes on right? noon the first day. So what, what we figured is okay. that the people that are still on the fence are not 100% sure they want to kind of see a little bit. So this way they'll get a chance to watch a few classes before the ultimate decision comes in about the price going up. So it's actually noon on May 3rd is when the price goes up or awesome. depending on when I remember to click the little button that says the price goes up. So it could be 1237 <laughs> or something by the time I re remember to do it. But the, the aim is noon on May 3rd is when it's supposed to go up. And where can everybody find the information about the summit? It's lightroomsummit.com. A hard one. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, so what was your reaction when you were able to, you know, scoop up that domain? <laughs> I was really surprised, actually, because I was ready. I had a whole list of potential, like, you know, LR Summit 2021. <laughs> and so it was like that. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will yes, take that. That's <laughs> One of those lucky ones. That's that's awesome. Um, so uh, I only have one other question, but I'm wondering before we I get to that last question, if you have any um, other, you know, things you want to share with everybody who's watching or or listening to this interview later on, um, you know, um, about the summit or in Lightroom about Lightroom. <laughs> well, the one the one thing that I would add again, just because I get to see all the emails from people that are have questions about the summit, is that. I have since added a note to tell people there is a FAQ section at the bottom of the page because a lot of the questions people have are there. It's just at the very bottom, and a lot of people didn't quite scroll that far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would say if you go to the page and you're wondering, well, what about this, just keep scrolling because the chances are the questions are answered. If not, you can always send a, a note and uh, make sure that the questions are answered. Awesome. Matt, anything you want to share um, before we wrap up? Uh, no, not really. I think, uh, I, I, think we, uh, I think we took care of most of it. So excited to, awesome. see, uh, excited to see the result from it. So, Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be really, really fun and educational for everybody. Um, so my last question is that uh, related but unrelated, um, I see that you are both teaching at the Visual Storytelling Conference from May 14th to May 17th. Uh, can you share what each of you are teaching at that summit? Well, that's, that's, that's putting me <laughs> on the spot because I have to remember, uh, well, at this stage, at least for me, I was asked to submit several class ideas. So I'm not sure which ones they have chosen, but I um, <laughs> am doing obviously Photoshop centric classes given the nature of this particular uh, online event uh, for mm -hmm. things like uh, I think one of them I'm doing is uh, about how to remove or replace or retouch anything. So just a whole retouching kind of removal of distracting elements class. And then I'm hopefully, if they pick this one, doing one on all kinds of ways to work more efficiently with automation and uh, Photoshop actions and all that kind of stuff. Cool. And I am doing something on Lightroom and Photoshop. 
<laughs> Sounds really, I want to watch that. It's about all I know at this point. <laughs> okay, so, so you both you both pitched some ideas, but nothing was solidified yet. But it was worth asking anyway. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, all right. So thank you guys uh, for joining uh, this me today for this conversation. I hope that everybody goes to lightroomsummit.com. Check it out. Um, again, as you heard, it is free to join the summit. And if you want to get access to the videos forever, it is $99 until the summit starts or about noon that day. <laughs> <laughs> about noon that day. Right. Um, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and I will talk to you both soon. All right. Thanks, Scott. Take care.